Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Path to DevOps series. I'm Shiki and thank you so much for waiting until we learned enough Kubernetes so that we could progress with the Path to DevOps. Now, having said that, today is an important day for our project or for our journey because we are going to take the time and step back a bit and think about the next steps that we need to do in order to take our three microservices and successfully deploy them in Kubernetes, right? So today we're going to do just that. We're going to plan ahead. We're going to look at where we are first, and then we're going to plan ahead and see what we want to do next. First thing first, let's review our pipeline so far. We start in a code repository, which is hosted in Azure repos Git. And from there, we trigger an Azure pipeline. And inside of the pipeline, we have three subsequent steps that happen. The first one is the compilation of the code. And then after the compilation, we get an artifact, which is a jar file or a dist folder in case of the front end. We move that artifact inside of a new image, uh, which we build. And then we tag and we push that image into Docker Hub. So that's basically all our current pipeline does. Now, this is all cool in terms of DevOps processes, but if you only have a build pipeline which sends an image to a remote registry, you don't actually deploy it. You don't have your application running, right? And this is why we've taken a small break from the Path to DevOps series to start the Kubernetes tutorial series so that I could give you guys enough information and the right instruments uh, to start thinking about how we will deploy these applications into Kubernetes. And that's exactly what we plan to do next. Okay, this is the next steps proposal. And we're also going to start from the code repository with a pipeline. And the purpose of that pipeline would be to uh, have a set of YAML manifests, which get configured in the pipeline with the right Docker image with the right uh, information about the resources we're trying to deploy. So these will be Kubernetes YAML manifests for services, deployments, pods, uh, the stuff we learned about in the Kubernetes series of tutorials. And these are going to get applied onto the AKS clusters API. And the AKS cluster will pull the images from the Docker hub and run the applications for us, right? So all we need to do now is put all of this in action. And we're going to do that by making a to-do list so that we don't forget what the next steps are, right? So the first thing on the to-do list will be to create the infrastructure necessary to support our cause. And we will create a Kubernetes cluster and a MySQL database for the data of the application to sit in. Then we need to construct those YAML manifests for Kubernetes. Yeah, we need to create uh, the deployment manifest, the service manifest. So all of that will need to sit somewhere in our code repositories. And also we will need the pipeline imp implementation. We will need the actual Azure pipeline, which will deploy our applications to Kubernetes. Now, because we have a hefty to-do list comprised of three big work items, and because I want to teach you guys a new feature of Azure DevOps, we're going to transform those items on our previous to-do list in work items in Azure DevOps. In order to create a work item, the menu we're looking for is the boards menu and underneath it, you can find the work items submenu. And if we hit here, the new work item button, we see a variety of choices. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to create a user story because this is the default work item in agile methodologies. And here we have create infrastructure. This was the first one and we're going to save. New one, user story as well. This one was create Kubernetes manifest. Yep. And when we design the manifests, we're just going to have one manifest, but uh, we'll be able to fill in parameters. For example, we can use the same service and the pipeline will complete the service name. Yeah. And then we can use the same template for all of our microservices to deploy them. Okay. And then we can have the final user story. Great. All right. And now if you wanted to drill down and give even more detail, for example, let's do that for create infrastructure. Let me move myself so you can see you would be able here in the lower right hand corner, press on add link, new item, and you would create a child. And in this case, uh, create a KS cluster, as I said, and save and close, and then also create 
MySQL server. Okay. Now this should do. And this is how your work items will look like. And if you want to track progress, you can actually go to boards here and you can move them uh, through different uh, statuses. Okay. But uh, this is more visual and it helps you keep track of what you want to do. Thank you for still being here. Uh, as I said, this was just a little checkpoint to prioritize our work and see what our next steps are in the path to DevOps journey. Uh, now, in the future episodes, we're going to actually create the infrastructure I uh, said we need to create and we're going to create those manifests as well. So I'm, I will give you a uh, follow along step by step approach. And yes, Path to DevOps is back on track starting now. Uh, from time to time, I will still do a Kubernetes tutorial video uh, to add on top of some new objects or functionality that we need to know in order to progress here. But basically, Path to DevOps is the main series I plan to follow along with, okay? So if you like this kind of content, just drop me a message, hit the like button, why not? It helps a lot. So once again, thank you so much and I wish you a great day. Cheers.